So just now I want to summarize this with what is the future? Where are we going now? So TCG and ICGC focused on primary tumors. Most of them were previously untreated. So, um, and that was the right thing to do to analyze um, um, uh, primary cancers, understanding what is the drivers, what causes cancers before we see the effect of, of treatment. But, um, but uh, and, and we haven't reached the 100,000 uh, goal that we wanted. And in fact, the, uh, the NCI has initiated some projects to try to reach to this red line in the curve that, um, that I showed earlier of the, to reach the 2% in the population in a few cancer types. But we are still far from the 100,000 exomes that we would like to get. But there's other activities that are um, uh, started and we are now pushing um, uh, fast uh, forward is striving to understand what are the drivers of resistance. So now that there's treatment given to the, patient, to the patients, the cancer landscape, fitness landscape is different and mutations that were not drivers before could now become drivers because they are now conferring resistance to the therapy. So we want to understand what are the drivers of resistance. And, and, uh, and so to do that, we are, we are studying samples before treatment and after treatment and comparing the, uh, the, the mutations and the clones that are growing. And this is, these are activities that, uh, that we are undertaking right now. And that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum that is still lacking is, is um, studying kind of the pre-cancer lesions. What's, what are the drivers that are in, in, of pre-cancer lesions and what are, the cancer, what are the drivers of lesions in the body that will never become cancer, that are growing, that are clonal expansions, but they will never become cancer. Um, um, so this is uh, also related to um, what are the potential germline risk alleles, which we know some, but by far we don't know uh, the majority of, of, uh, of these risk alleles in, in cancer, and which these typically need much larger cohorts. So the, the going forward, still we would like to complete the catalog of, of, cancer, of drivers of primary tumors and reach this 100,000 number. But uh, in parallel, we are going now to the early stages of cancer, understanding what are the pre-cancer lesions and what really what is the normal cell? What is really a, um, a clone growing in, of normal cells? When does it transform to cancer? What are the cells of origin? And questions like that. And then in the end of the spectrum is what drives resistance to cancer and how can we overcome resistance by potentially combination therapies that would kind of um, 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 uh, basically prevent the cells from generating these um, resistance mutations to, the, to all the types of the combination of, of um, therapies. So this is where we're going right now. And um, just to summarize the, the lecture, we talked about these two major tasks of, of cancer genome analysis. One is to characterize the, the genome and evolution within a patient of the cancer, and what are the mutational mechanisms in, in that, in that uh, um, patient. And then the interpretation task of really going across patients and asking what are the what are the drivers, what are the subtypes, and uh, what are the, um, um, what are the uh, um, different, um, again, mechanisms and in different um, uh, association with different clinical outcomes, etc. So kind of the lessons learned, first of all, cloud computing is essential for studying large, uh, large um, data sets of, of the cancer. Um, characterizations, we need high, to be highly sensitive and specific tools. Um, there are clonal and subclonal mutations, and, and I urge you to look into this phylogic NDT um, uh, uh, bioarchive paper and, and other uh, recent papers that used it. And then the interpretation, um, there's this, long, laid of, this uh, long tail of distribution of significant mutated genes. We need to take into account the variation of mutation rate on the sample level, on the gene level, and on the base level resolution of the variation of the mutation to really model the, um, the mutations in cancer. Uh, again, mutations can vary more than a thousand fold across different cancer types. Uh, mutation spectra can be decomposed into patterns to identify processes. And again, I urge you to read the paper from the PCOG on, on, uh, on, the, on the mutational processes in cancer. 
Um, integrating multiple sources of evidence can increase the power to detect cancer genes, like the clustering and the, and the um, of course, the number of mutations back to, compared to the background, the clustering, the functional effect of mutations, and the 3D clustering of mutations. We know cancer gene mutated more than 20% of patients, but really to find the ones more than 2% of patients, we need 100,000 tumors. Looking at the entire genomes finds additional drivers, but not as much, um, but, as mu but with lower, sorry for the typo here, less, less frequency than, is, than in coding regions, roughly the 10 to one ratio. And um, uh, eventually, I didn't talk about experiments, but all of what we find in these statistical tools are candidate cancer genes. And then we need to actually perform the experiments to convince ourselves that these mutations really promote the growth or, or delay the death of, of cells to, to um, uh, promote uh, or drive cancer. So I would like to thank the many people that are involved in the studies that I described today, and also many people that uh, are listed here or not listed here um, uh, from the lab over the, over the years, developing these different tools and different um, and different uh, um, uh, kind of uh, analysis and projects. And again, to remind you that um, I'm uh, looking for people excited to work in this area. And I'll be happy to take uh, questions. I get it. Um, for the metastatic or the resistance tumors, do you think we will be finding a lot more new mutations or? existing mutations that we found in primary tumor but with much higher allele frequency that, that's a great that's a great question so clearly in the metastases when we study them maybe i'll go back to the to this slide when we study a, a post-treatment um, or a metastasis or post-treatment uh, recurrent cancer of course we we find all the mutations that were all the way back to the fertilized egg but if we compare it to the samples that came before the treatment, we could kind of subtract this, these ones. And we are looking only at the mutations that either occurred in this period of time, or at least um, um, kind of um, gave fitness advantage and, were, and grew, the clones grew over this period of time. And, uh, and those are um, not, many, not many more mutations compared to the mutations that were in the, in, the, in the entire history of the cancer. Of course, depend on the, on the cancer type. If it's melanoma, there's more here in the history if it's, or lung, but if it's uh, rhabdoid, it won't be as many. Um, the, it also depends on the treatment. Some treatments, chemotherapies actually generate mutations and we can see signatures of the mutations that they generate uh, in the, in the post-treatment sample. Now, in terms of what are the drivers that we we'll find or what are the cancer genes that we we'll find, I think we will find, and that we have a, some evidence of that, we'll find a mixture of two types. One are, for example, mutations that we rarely see in primary cancers that are on the target of the drive of the treatment, if it's a targeted therapy or in the same pathway. And, and we find those. We also find just cancer genes that uh, uh, just occur later. So for example, it could be a, a KRAS mutation that is not related to necessarily the treatment, but it just drives the cancer faster and therefore uh, uh, becomes um, uh, resistant to the therapy because if the therapy is, think of it as like putting a brakes on the, on the, on the car, the, the new drivers, which are known drivers in cancer, are just pressing the, the, the gas pedal much harder so it actually continues to grow. And, and then, um, but so I think there'll be a mixture of these two, the known drivers, but also new drivers that we've never seen in primary or rarely seen in primary that are really related to the mechanism of action of the, of the treatment. Thank you so much. I'm gonna stop.